Hi there, and welcome to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, the post-harvest podcast that interviews people of interest across the food supply chain. Today on our show, I'm joined by Yuki Hanyu from Integriculture, who I'll be talking to about how their cellular agriculture platform is developing sustainable protein in the form of cell-cultured meat products. So with no further delays, let's get started. Well, hello, Yuki. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Thank you. Good, good, good. Before we get into it, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and maybe a little fun fact about yourself. So, um, I'm currently a CEO of a cellular agriculture startup, Integriculture, Inc., uh, which is also a spin-off from the Shoujin Meat Project, which is a citizen science community that makes open-source DIY cell culture meat. So, Integriculture, as well as another in the non-profit organization, Cellular Agriculture Institute of Common, they have a common root in the Shoujin Meat Project, and both inherit the vision and spirit of openly accessible, democratized cellular agriculture. Hmm, okay. I'm looking forward to hearing more. On that note, let's talk farm to fork. So continuing on from you telling us what you do, would you mind telling us a little bit more about the history of Integriculture? So um, it dates all the way back to that time of Shoujin Meat Project. I first got interested in cell cultured meat when I was small because it's pretty much a ubiquitous gadget appearing in various works of science fiction, whether mm. the anime or video game or mm. the movies. Mm. So yeah. I basically I was aware of the idea. Mm. And basically I wanted to do some sci-fi with my life. And that's how I got into science and most what applied science and actually did some science technology related job. And then it was 2014, I thought about, okay, time to get serious. And mm. I chose the best sci-fi topic of that time and cell culture meat appeared as that. <laughs> so that's where I found it, the Shoujin Meat Project, because I needed to start somewhere. Mm. Obviously, I didn't have any like money or connection or the actual technology. But as I talk about cell agriculture and cell cultured meat, and uh, people who think like me basically gathered, and we started doing experiments at home and everywhere. And that's when the time when we basically got most of the vision worked out. Like it should be accessible and it should be democratized. And also the technology itself, which has to be very, very cheap, at least theoretically. And that's when we basically got our first patents. It actually came before Integrity Culture Company, but yeah. So that's when the basic concept of co-culturing cells would make external growth factors unnecessary mm. and should make everything super cheap. Yeah. So that's how we were working on open source DIY cultured meat. Yep. Then after that, we also uh, knew that we should have some business segment within this entire cellular agriculture ecosystem. And Integrity Culture Company basically spun off to take that part based on the super cheap cell culture, core culture technology. Mm. Wow, it sounds like it's been quite the journey so far. Would you mind explaining the process of developing meat products in labs and how this will be a more sustainable production method for the meat industry? So the process of uh, making cell cultured meat, you start with taking a few cells from the original animal. Uh, you don't have to kill the animal there and put the cells in the cultured medium, which contains like sugar, vitamins, and other nutrients, as well as some micronutrients, so-called growth factors, that basically you tell the cells to multiply uh, or differentiate or do something. And if you place the cells in the culture medium containing all these things, cells start multiplying and that multiplication happens in an exponential manner. But depending on the cells, you basically get pretty much infinite number of cells. Mm. It's actually not infinite, but there's a realistic limit to that. It can't be more than the mass of the Earth itself. But yeah, you can multiply to that sort of large enough number. Yeah. And that basically animal protein that we can eat. Mm. Mm. So the cells produced it could be turned into a steak, although we don't have the technology yet, steak or some squeezed mass or meat nugget or mixed mm. with plant-based fiber or something to make, uh, make something. So for consumption. Wow, that really is very sci-fi. It's very cool. What would you say is the biggest challenge your team have encountered so far with developing your meat products? Uh, it's always the technology, actually. Mm. But we have been making good progress with the technology and compared to that, what's becoming more of a problem is like those non-scientific stuff, 
like organizational or the regulatory and those things specific to like human species, not physics, chemistry, or biology. Yeah, I'd imagine there'd be quite a bit of red tape around developing meat products from the cells themselves. So with that in mind, what has been the biggest surprise while working in food science? Biggest surprise? This has happened to myself, but initially I was thinking that it will be cool to make cell cultured meat. Basically, it will be cool to make meat without animals. But mm -hmm. after that, it was a big surprise that it had much bigger meaning than that. Mm, okay. So from where you stand, what would you identify as being one of the biggest pain points or blind spots in the food industry? Blind spot in food industry, it's probably the hidden environmental costs that's, yeah, that's pretty much invisible from the consumer end. Mm. What practical measures do you think could combat this? Practical measures? I think um, whether we like it or not, the price just goes up if it has got environmental cost added to it. So it could appear in the form of carbon tax uh, in a quite artificial manner. Mm -hmm. But what more likely to happen, and no one would like to like, see that happening, but climate change and all those things, uh, they're forcing the prices are going up. Yeah, yeah. So has the COVID pandemic had any effect on Integra Culture's day-to-day -day operations? Not quite day to day, but all the supply chain disruptions have seriously delayed the uh, equipment delivery and stuff. So mm. it's more on the capital expenditure side rather than the daily operation side. Mm. But yes, we did have an effect on that. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say is the biggest area your team are most curious about? Where is the most research and time going at the moment? So since we have already worked out the uh, culture medium growth factor issue, our effort is more in scaling because this is a bit tricky part because the bigger bioreactors are out there and we can just buy it. But we know that it's inherently excessively expensive. So mm. we have to come up with a new design of bioreactor, which hasn't been tried before. Yeah, wow. I mean, designing your own bioreactor would be quite an undertaking. On, on the back end of that, is there a particular group or innovation within the industry that you're excitedly keeping a watchful eye on? The development I'm feeling most excited is in the bioreactor design side, actually. Bioreactor design does not mean just how it looks like from the outside, but mm -hmm. um, what stuff to put in inside as well. Mm -hmm. Like, if you see, even if it's the same hardware, the stainless tank, inside we could have some scaffold or under new design, it could be whole fiber membrane or something those developments that increase the cell density uh, as well as anything that makes cell culture inexpensive mm -hmm. are quite exciting developments. Yeah, okay. So what's one thing you wish you knew when you began your career in developing cell cultured products? Uh, yeah, initially, what I was thinking was like cell cultured meat technology being developed in DIY manner, in a distributed manner, outside corporate world or even outside the university. So it was very, very, I would say, counterculture, anti-establishment sort of uh, mindset. Um, but that's how we, how we started. But at some point, we had to face the reality of like fundraise and those things. So we basically decided to uh, spin off things from there. So Shoujin Meets Project will keep on taking the like, anti-establishment counterculture spirit and to think freely. But meanwhile, Integrate Culture Company he builds the physical infrastructure to enable the uh, Cell Agriculture Institute of the Common State uh, policy and rulemaking part. Mm, yeah, wow. So, Yuki, we're coming to a close, but before we do, I just wanted to ask, what is the number one takeaway you really want the listeners to absorb from this episode? Um, you may see the cell agriculture startups trying to develop sustainable cell cultured meat, but you may feel that they keep all the technology by themselves or so, although I may be wrong. But in our case, we are open about the technology. So if anyone wants to make cell culture meat, whether big or small, please give us a call. And you will yourself become a, a cell agriculture farmer. Definitely. I'm excited to see what lays ahead for Integriculture. Well, that's all for today's episode of Let's Talk Farm to Fork. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Yuki, for joining me today. If you'd like to know more about Yuki and Integriculture, check out the link in the description of the episode. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And don't forget to leave a review and share with your friends.
Until next time, you've been listening to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, a post-harvest podcast. Mm-hmm.